Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about metabolic syndrome, its diagnostic criteria and pathogenesis in brief. Metabolic syndrome is also called as insulin resistance syndrome or syndrome X. It is a cluster of metabolic abnormalities that includes insulin resistance leading to hyperglycemia, hypertension, central or visceral obesity and atherogenic dyslipidemia for example high triglycerides and low hdl cholesterol metabolic syndrome is strongly associated with an increased risk of developing atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease that's why early diagnosis is very important so that effective lifestyle modifications and other risk factor modifications can be employed to prevent cardiovascular disease let's study this clinical case scenario a 53 year old housewife presented to the hospital with chest discomfort of one week duration she was a smoker and had lived a very sedentary lifestyle her mother was known case of diabetes and hypertension her bmi was 32 kg per meter square waist circumference 102 cm hips 99 cm blood pressure 160 by 100 mm of mercury the patient is obese and she has hypertension as her blood pressure is increased and she has a family history of diabetes and hypertension her random blood sugar was increased it was 210 mg per deciliter fasting blood sugar 150 mg per deciliter and postprandial was 280 mg per deciliter hba1c 8.4% so she has hyperglycemia and she has diabetes mellitus lipid profile shows following results total cholesterol is 320 mg per deciliter she has hypercholesterolemia hdl cholesterol 38 mg per deciliter it is decreased because in case of female it should be more than 50 mg per deciliter ldl cholesterol 235 mg per deciliter and it is increased normal should be less than 100 mg per deciliter triglyceride levels 241 mg per deciliter means she has hypertriglyceridemia so she has multiple risk factors for developing atherosclerosis and this patient is obese her uh, waist hip ratio is more than 1 she has hypertension diabetes mellitus and dyslipidemia so all these factors suggest she has metabolic syndrome and presence of multiple risk factors for atherosclerosis is seen in this patient and that's why patient has presented with chest discomfort which means that she has developed atherosclerosis and if not treated patient can soon develop cardiovascular disease the diagnostic criteria for metabolic syndrome is given by national cholesterol education program adult treatment panel 3 and it includes central obesity if waist circumference in case of males is more than 102 cm and in case of females if it is more than 88 cm it is considered as central obesity the values are little different for south asian population in case of males if waist circumference is more than 90 cm and in females if it is more than 80 cm it is considered as central obesity second the presence of hypertriglyceridemia If triglyceride values are more than or equal to 150 mg per deciliter or if the person is on specific medication for hypertriglyceridemia this is the second criteria third is presence of low hdl cholesterol in case of males if hdl level is less than 40 mg per deciliter and in female if it is less than 50 mg per deciliter or if the person is on specific medication for low hdl cholesterol the fourth is presence of hyperglycemia if fasting plasma glucose is more than or equal to 100 mg per deciliter or if the person is on specific medication for hyperglycemia or previously diagnosed with type 2 diabetes the fifth is presence of hypertension if blood pressure is systolic blood pressure is more than or equal to 130 mm of mercury or diastolic blood pressure is more than or equal to 85 mm of mercury or if the person is on specific medication for hypertension so these are five important criteria for diagnosis of metabolic syndrome and the five criteria are central obesity hypertriglyceridemia 
लो एच डी एल कोलेस्ट्रॉल हाइपर ग्लाइसेमिया एंड हाइपर टेंशन टू डायग्नोज अ पर्सन विथ मेटाबोलिक सिंड्रोम एटलीस्ट थ्री और मोर ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर रिक्वायर्ड इफ एनी थ्री और मोर आर प्रेजेंट इन अ पर्सन देन वी कैन से दैट द पर्सन इज हैविंग मेटाबोलिक सिंड्रोम the pathogenic mechanisms of metabolic syndrome are complex and they are not yet fully understood or elucidated whether the individual component of metabolic syndrome represent distinct pathologies or it is a manifestation of a common pathogenic mechanism it is still debated but out of all the proposed mechanisms insulin resistance chronic inflammation and neurohormonal activation they they are the main players in the initiation progression and transition of metabolic syndrome to cardiovascular disease neurohormonal activation involves the role of adipose tissue as an endocrine organ as it is involved in the synthesis and release of various hormones that we are going to see in the later part of this video what is insulin resistance it is the failure of target tissues to respond normally to insulin and which are those target tissues those are adipose tissues muscle and liver what happens in adipose tissue we know that glut4 receptors are insulin dependent so whenever there is insulin resistance the glucose is not taken up by the adipose tissue so inside the adipose tissue there is lack of glucose and the inhibitory effect of insulin on hormone sensitive lipase is relieved and that's why there is increased lipolysis in adipose tissue what is lipolysis it is the degradation of triacylglycerol into fatty acid and glycerol so lipolysis leads to increase free fatty acids and the further it leads to dyslipidemia what happens in the muscle muscle also express glut4 receptors which are insulin dependent and due to insulin resistance glucose is not taken up by the muscle so low glucose uptake as glucose is not taken up by the muscle there is no glycogen synthesis so there is decrease glycogenesis and it leads to increase postprandial glucose and then what is the effect of insulin resistance on liver there is failure of inhibit inhibition of gluconeogenesis insulin is not due to insulin resistance there is failure of inhibition of gluconeogenesis and that's why there is increased gluconeogenesis which leads to increased fasting glucose so due to insulin resistance there is hyperglycemia and due to this hyperglycemia beta cells of pancreas they start producing more insulin so then it is followed by hyperinsulinemia but after some days the free fatty acid they cause destruction of beta cells so hyperinsulinemia along with the insulin resistance then the destruction of beta acid uh, beta cells of pancreas it leads to hypoinsulinemia and due to low insulin then there will be more hyperglycemia and type 2 diabetes mellitus now let's see how insulin resistance is developed and how it is associated with obesity various environmental and genetic factors are responsible for obesity for example physical inactivity or sedentary lifestyle high calorie intake stress and various genetic factors like family history or whenever there is mutation of some leptin or uh, op gene so it leads to positive energy balance and it leads further leads to adipose tissue hyperplasia and hypertrophy and then there is altered free fatty acid metabolism and altered release of adipokines what are these adipokines these are the various hormones which are synthesized by adipose tissue for example various anti hyperglycemic hormones are synthesized by adipose tissue like leptin adiponectin omentin and visfatin leptin is responsible for decrease food intake and increase energy expenditure but in case of obesity there is increased leptin levels are found in the blood and it is because due to leptin resistance adiponectin this hormone is antiatherogenic and anti inflammatory and its level is decreased in case of obesity along with that the levels of omentin and visfatin are also decreased in case of obesity now which hormones are increased in this condition the pro hyperglycemic like resistin tumor necrosis factor alpha interleukin 6 retinol binding protein and 
these hormones are also responsible for the inflammatory changes that is inflammation so there is dysregulation in the synthesis and release of various adipokines and this leads to inflammation so along with altered fatty free fatty acid metabolism altered release of adipokines and inflammation it the consequence is insulin resistance so in the obesity there is altered free fatty acid metabolism and altered release of adipokines so which are the various consequences of this the first consequence is increased portal free fatty acid and it further leads to lipogenesis in the liver increased vldl synthesis and secretion because triacylglycerol are packaged in the form of lipoprotein vldl in the liver and there is increased gluconeogenesis so it it further leads to dyslipidemia and hyperglycemia and as i have mentioned earlier this altered free fatty acid metabolism inflammation altered release of adipokines leads to insulin resistance which is followed by hyperinsulinemia and then there will be impaired beta cell function of pancreas and it further leads to hyperglycemia and type 2 diabetes mellitus so there is altered release of adipokines uh, and there is increased leptin level because of leptin resistance increased level of angiotensin 2 aldosterone and there is activation of renin angiotensin system and sympathetic nervous system which leads to increased sodium reabsorption vasoconstriction which develops hypertension then increased factor 5 7 plasminogen activator inhibitor 1 it leads to oxidative stress endothelial dysfunction and pro thrombotic pro inflammatory state which is called as hypercoagulable state state so this pathogenesis of metabolic syndrome is very complex and three important mechanisms are very important which leads to these various consequences so first important is insulin resistance then neuro uh, hormonal activation which involves the role of adipose tissue so obesity altered free fatty acid metabolism and altered release of adipokines is very important in the neurohormonal activation and third is chronic inflammation so all this together they are involved in the pathogenesis of metabolic syndrome so in this video we have seen what is metabolic syndrome uh, what is the diagnostic criteria and uh, various pathogenic mechanism that is pathogenesis in brief